Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'm playing automation for the absolutely first time. I've not played this game. I don't know how it works. All I know is that it is highly technical. So bear with me as I sort of attempt to figure it out. I did do very small playing around with some parts, but let's start from scratch. By playing, I mean I literally just clicked random buttons. So I want to make a V8 just like what I have in my truck. I just love the LS type of engines, as you know from my name here, that I am a Chevy guy, but I do like all cars. I'm just a car guy, actually. Um, aluminum heavy, that's what some LSs and Corvettes and Trailblazers and stuff are. Head and valves. And then you can see here, it gives us the ability to select different types of heads and valves. I'm going to go with push rod. Wow, and you can see the little explosions happening. This is epic. What an epic game. Like, for someone like me who just likes cars, it's really cool to see a game that's an actual simulator of engines, like cars, everything. Like, it's actually super, super cool, I have to say. Okay, so we increased the size. I could increase the stroke as well. Um, more power is kind of what I'm looking for. So good for low end RPM and power, better efficiency potential. Okay, let's just leave it up here. I don't want a super high strung engine, but I want something that is powerful enough to go in a lot of vehicles. Again, LS is kind of my goat. That's the one I just kind of like how they've done it. And it goes in Cadillacs, it goes in trucks, it goes in all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, obviously if I just stick with like the cheapest, lightest material, the kind of stuff that you find in regular cars the most, it'll probably be quite weak. But if I do a little bit of playing around like this, where I do forged, for example, instead, or like heavy cast. Pistons. We could go heavy cast as well. And then here you see you can even do some balancing mass, like, unbelievable. Unbelievable, this game. Just from the get-go, the ability to see the different types of engines and I haven't even touched on cars um, is actually really cool no variable valve timing okay rpm limits so not a huge fan of massive massive rpms we're gonna keep it low I'm not sure what this quality is used for other than like how, what what is to stop me from doing 15 quality unless it's a career mode thing I guess it is production cost, engineering time, material costs. I'm just going to leave it in zero. We're going to leave it naturally for this variant. And of course, for the family, I'm going to do a Buckle V8. As you know, Buckle is my brand in Stormworks. I'll call this test one. We'll jump to the next one. The carbureted or fuel injected. And then you can set the different types. So carbureted is like old school as you can see here looks kind of cool but this is kind of what you find on those old school cars with like the single carburetor on top so we'll go injected direct injection and we will do a that looks really cool variable we can go performance mid Manifold size. Now, fuel type, unleaded, and this is like. So now you could set like proper <laughs> fuels. But if we go to like regular, what you find at a gas station, 91, that kind of works. And everything has information. Like, if you aren't familiar with how engines work, you will learn by playing this game. Wow. Alright, now we're on headers. Okay. For headers, 
I gotta see that. Oh, I've broken the camera mode. If I could reset the camera. I like the ability to spin around like this. Okay. Compact cast. Cast low. Cast mid. Tubular. Tubular long and race. Long tube headers are what I have in my truck and kind of like how they look here. Also the dual exhaust system on my truck. But we could do it a single exhaust. Increase the size a bit. With a two-way cat. And then mufflers. So obviously the sound is muffled. The gases are restricted a little bit. We can do a baffled and a straight through. So now we're having all kinds of issues. Crank failed due to excessive RPMs. Wow. So some of the stuff that I put here, it was not happy with. So now what I can do is go here. Engine suggestions. Crank failed due to excessive RPM stress. Try reducing RPM limit or improving the crank. Conrad failed. Engine reliability too low. Crank is experiencing high torque. Pistons are experiencing high levels of RPM stress. Engine has unutilized fuel octane, higher compression. Wow. So there's a lot of different things going on here. And of course, that means that at this point, my, my engine is just not happy. It's struggling. And now, can I fix it? No, it says left click, clear ignored suggestions, right click, ignore current suggestions. So I could straight up choose to ignore this or I can go ahead and fix it. So I can reduce the RPM limit or improve the crank is what it's saying. So if we go to the crank, we can increase this and now that changed itself. So you could see that with the different elements, we're actually live changing the engine now. So obviously the size of the engine, the type of material that we're using, if we use cast iron, it's going to fail even earlier. So we can kind of go with this. Having a harmonic damper does fix our engines. Now we're stuck with the conrods being the uh, stressing point. It says high RPMs. So at this point, do I go and reduce my RPMs? Like, I could refuse to let it get to a high level here. I could literally just set a limiter at 300 horsepower. That's getting a little iffy there. But does increasing quality do anything? Like, is it work that way or do I just have to se select a better Conrad? Forged light. And now they're happy. So now I was able to get the engine good and I could increase now the RPMs, interesting enough. 350 horses. I like that. I mean, I, one can get very technical here. Instead, I'm just kind of breezing through it. Obviously, I have to play on my own time and kind of take a look and see what on earth is going on here. But it seems that this has given me at least something... Now I have some warnings. Conrods are experiencing high levels of RPM stress, lower RPM limit. Engine is retarding ignition timing at full throttle to avoid knock. This may improve fuel economy. However, reducing compression, boost pressure, or using richer fuel may increase power output. So we're getting an issue with the engine. Okay, full throttle. Interesting. So I saw a lot of people commenting like they enjoy more detailed engine builds, specifically if they're uh, kind of more realistic ended. And as you know, my channel, I do prefer and kind of go with the more realistic type of thing. Because for me, yeah, we could just put on the heaviest and tightest like steel, titanium, whatever, but... I like to kind of play within reasonable bounds, if you will. Okay, so we were able to drop that down and that went to a kind of green. But our Conrad is still the issue here. 
So that connecting rod is really, really not having fun here. I mean, if you set something like this, you actually fail the engine, you destroy the thing. This way I'm actually able to keep up at the expense of potentially causing damage. Opposed to it failing. Well, obviously the failing part is very bad. <laughs> you throw a turbo on and you get all kinds of different things. But we're not going to do a turbo, we're going to stick to, to simple here. Now changing other parts of the engine might also impact the actual engine performance in other ways as well. As you can see here, between mechanical fuel injection or direct injection. And again, if you're not familiar with what those are, then you can kind of read upon it here. Ah, it, I just, this is so cool. This is such an interesting, interesting game. So now, you see we have the ability to set the ignition timing. And that also changes the way the engine behaves, of course. Right, I, I kind of just fixed some random things, changed the engine uh, stroke, and now it seems that everything is happy here, which is good. If I jump to flow, we're using a lot of our exhaust flow, so what if I change the size of that? Failure due to knock. Interesting. Turn that up, you get something like this push this up higher and now we're a little happier so the exhaust itself depending on what you set it it affects the headers too so you can see now we kind of could reach 100% capacity at both of them but that's because we're using a single exhaust if I do dual then you end up doing something like this and of course make it a little bit smaller in diameter will also change the way the headers work now i'm using cast low that was actually something i must have randomly clicked afterwards because if i recall i was going to use the long tube headers and we'll go single exhaust again now you can see that it's sort of a bottleneck but if we open it up like that the numbers get better and so does the horsepower we're up to 400 horsepower now if I jump back down to stress, you can see, so we were causing stress on the engine, creating knocking and all kinds of other stuff because the exhaust wasn't good enough. So it just goes to show you, like, people modify their exhausts without really knowing what they're doing or doing all kinds of stuff, and they end up doing potentially damage to their car just simply because they don't know how to behave with that type of information. And to make things even more complicated and amazing here, you have all this other data that you can uh, take a look at. Emissions to you got your power and torque map, like just how wild is this? Unreal. Aesthetics, all right. We're back here with the engine after having dealt with the exhaust. So I did increase the size. You can see that's a fairly substantial, wow, very wide exhaust flange over there. Wow. I mean, this cannot be a stock LS engine. At this point, you're looking at like a modified power, like built for power type system. So this wouldn't be your basic basic one this would be something along the lines of like you know <laughs> performance corvette territory type thing so we could paint it i do like how that looks now you have other things too transparent aluminum carbon shush, material i see leather soft how oh all right well that's interesting you put a glass topper for your engine. I'm just going to reset the paint. Bottom end. Nope. Engine aesthetics. Okay. Valve cover. There we go. So I was, so you could paint each individual part it seems. Or set the material for each individual part. Oh. 
Okay, valve cover design, overhead. Go to the next panel. I can't believe this. Do we actually have... Wow. We actually have an engine dyno. So... Do I increase the throttle? Okay. Interesting. So it's a big engine. I did change the size a little bit to kind of hit closer to 5.7 liter as the old um, LS engines kind of thing or old like Ford engines. But that 6 liter mark is kind of like a sweet zone. But you see here with this, we're just under 300, maybe too close to being under to the point where maybe just doing that can put us over. And then we're really at that 5.7 liter mark. And there you have it. The data's here. So now with that done, I imagine I should be able to put this into a car if I go back to the main menu. So we have our engine here now. With the engine ready, if we go to car designer, Let's make a new model. This game is nuts. So here we have it. We are kind of looking at different eras. So as you scroll here, you can see here we are at the 2011s, which is like, by all accounts, what we call like modern cars nowadays. I mean, you could probably make anything. And then as you scroll down to different eras, you get different things so obviously if we go back down into like 1990s you get kind of like corvette looking things range rover bodies shapes and you could tweak them obviously that's the whole point um 1980s like a geo suv geo tracker we have kind of jeep looking bodies broncos and obviously you can go all the way down to the old suburbans old ford trucks and stuff so Tons of different bodies, and I can't wait to explore them. So stay tuned for the next video where I take a crack at the first time trying to develop some kind of uh, car with my engine. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Huge shout out to my supporters. Let me know what you think about me playing this new game. I have no idea of the implications and kind of all the things about it. So we'll have to see that together. If you're interested, I do have other Stormworks videos planned as well and ships, creations, cars and stuff. So stay tuned for all that. Until next time, happy automation or Stormworksing or whatever I may be playing.